We're good. I want to thank you all for coming out this evening, and I'd like to especially thank my colleagues uh, on the Joliet Township High School Board who come out tonight as well to support us, and that would be Tracy Spacia. Tracy Wade. Paige Heiden. It's very important that, uh, that we support each other in our endeavors, that there's no big me's or little you's. Right now our goal is to try to get the information out to our community, not only to this uh, community, but to communities throughout uh, the city of Joliet. Uh, so with that, we're on a tight timeline. We've got so much information, and I'm sure we won't allow some time for questions after it's over. So I'd like to introduce you to the leader of Joliet Township High School right now, who will tell you immediately that it's not me, it's always the team. But every team has a lead. Every band has a drum major. Somebody who's out there in front of everybody else is following and doing what they should to play their part within, within the system and within the, the goals that we all share. So with that, I'd like to introduce the superintendent of Joliet Township High School, Dr. Cheryl McCarthy. Thank you. Thank you so much for giving of your meeting time to have us here tonight. We are happy and proud of your president, did not tell you this, but he gives of his time monthly to Joliet Township High School. He attends our day meeting, and as a result, he gets a lot of information, but gives us a lot of information and back it. And he truly is modeling what I think you're asking your membership to do. So we thank you for that. And and you mentioned Dale as a head coach. I probably could be the quarterback. He does a lot of passing balls. <laughs> great team behind this effort that we call Joliet Township High School, and it's not just Joliet Township High School, it's our entire community. And um, our school board has great vision, and we're going to talk a little bit about how we got to where we are today, but I have a great team with me today. So behind the camera, because she likes to put herself behind the camera, is our yeah. community relations officer, Christine Schlishman, who is also a JREC member. And then we have principal of um, Central Campus, Principal Randich. And assistant principal, Dr. Jennifer Ray. <laughs> Guidance counselor, Natalie O'Connell, and parents. <laughs> and then we have two students today. So if you want to ask the students any questions, they'll be happy to field anything. Um, both of these students have been very, very active. Not just active in their own learning, but active in giving back to the school and making sure that we become better. And the things that they have been involved in doesn't necessarily affect them because they're both seniors now, which is hard to believe. But they've both been involved with our strategic plan and working to make things happen. And that's Matthew Burbank. <laughs> So again, thank you to the team. So everything that we do is driven by our strategic plan, and our strategic plan is driven by the community. Because on our strategic team are community members, members of higher education, parents, students, teachers, and administrators. And we develop a future thinking. What do we want our district to look like in the future, five years at a time? So everything that we talk about today didn't happen by happenstance. It was very deliberate, very focused in everything we do, every decision that any recommendation that I bring to the school board, the school board expects me to be able to tell them how does that relate to our strategic plan? How does it relate to our mission, our vision, the objectives we set forth? So we might sometimes have great ideas, but if they're not related at this time to our strategic plan, we stick with our guns. So we walk the walk. We don't develop a plan that the community wanted, put it on a shelf, and then do what we want. This plan gets delivered, and that's what you're going to hear about tonight. So a lot of people don't realize this, so we like to um, inform everyone. Gabriel Lopez, another <laughs> student. <laughs> it's very far drive from Shorewood. That's <laughs> what's the problem. Thank you for being here. So if you look at our, our high school district, we're made up of a lot of different sending schools and a lot of different communities. And that makes us the diverse community that we are, and we're very proud of that. We have two major campuses, Central and West, most people know that. 
We still talk about Joliet East, which is really close to here. Uh, people really remember East, and we have a big East alum population. Anyone an East alum here? Okay, so, <laughs> so we're so proud of that. But what people don't realize is how big we've become. So we have over 6,000 students at both of those campuses. Both campuses are a little bit over 3,000 students each. Those are very big schools, and we're growing. Where all of our neighboring districts have been losing enrollment, our enrollment has increased every year. We're not increasing dramatically. It's about 120 students each year, but we are incre uh, increasing. And then our additional facilities that we're very proud of, we have a transition center, which is for um, our special education population, an alternate school, special education population, our administrative center, um, our transportation center, and then our child care center. So our facilities group is very, very busy. So right now I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Jennifer Ray, who's going to talk a little bit about some things we've put in place with our strategic plan to make these very, very large schools an individual environment where we get to know our students and they get to know us. So as a really big school, we have a lot of things that we can offer our students. At the same time, when you have 3,000 students in a building, it's easy to get lost in those 3,000 students. So what we did a number of years ago was we decided we were going to go with an academy structure. A, the, cornerstone of our academy structure is our freshman academy. So our freshman students come into high school into a very large building with a lot of students and teachers in it, but they're in a small school within that school. Within their freshman academy, they have an eight-period day. They go a day, a period longer than everybody else does. They think it's a punishment. It's not. It's aimed to make sure that they get supports they need in reading and math if they need those supports, or that they have opportunities to take elective courses to start to explore some of their career interests. So they start at 7.20 in the morning. Within their freshman academy, they are with a team of teachers. So as a student, I would have an English, math, science, and social studies teacher that have an opportunity built into our structure to communicate with each other about how I'm doing in my class. They have team focus on how they address student issues, on planning student activities in the classroom, instructional activities. They use the opportunity to help students make that transition into high school. They go from being in a small school where there's not uh, too many students and they get a lot of attention into a transition time into being in a high school. They are housed at a separate part of the building. In, in Central Campus, they're all at the south end of the building. At the West Campus, there's a separate wing for the Freshman Academy students. Doesn't mean we never let them out, but we try to keep them close to their teachers close to one another to help provide that support that we know freshmen need to be successful in high school. They have built into their schedule additional literacy classes or math classes if they need those, or they have time for an elective class or two if, that, if they don't have the additional need. And they have a chance to begin as freshmen exploring what it is they want to do with their lives when they graduate from high school. And that leads us into the second part of our academy structure, which are our career academies. So we have a freshman academy that all of our freshmen go into. But then when they go into their sophomore year, depending on what kind of career they think they're interested in, they choose a career academy, and then they have a chance within that academy to start to explore their career focus. So, I was an unusual kid. I knew for as long as I can remember that I wanted to be a teacher. But a lot of my friends didn't have that advantage that I did. They weren't sure what they wanted to do. These career academies give students a chance to start to explore and do some finding out about what is it I want to do with my life. We have built into our sophomore curriculum an opportunity for students to go out and job shadow. 
So they actually get to go spend four hours with somebody who works in the career they're interested in and get a chance to really see what it's like. For some kids, they come back and that's what they're going to do. Other kids come back and that's not what they're going to do. It just depends on what they learn when they're there. So this is a chance for students to explore and learn. We have our five career academies are arts and communication, business management and information systems, health and medicine, human services, and our STEM academy, which is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Similar to the freshman academy, within the career academies, students have groups of teachers that they work with. Their curriculum has an academy focus, so they do activities here to let them explore their career interest. They have a program of study that makes sure with their work with their counselor and with their parents that they're taking classes that kind of gear them in the right direction so that when they leave high school, whether they're going to the military or college or a trade school or right into work, their course experience in high school has given them the foundation that they need to start off on the right foot, start off successful when they go to wherever it is they're going when they leave us. Within all of our career academies, and even at the freshman academy now, we have advanced placement classes where students can take classes, take a test at the end of the school year, and earn college credit. We have dual credit classes where they can earn credit through Joliet Junior College while they're still in high school. We even have an AP class, the advanced placement class, available for our freshmen now. Dr. Ray, can yes. we have maybe the students talk about what maybe dual enrollment or AP classes there are and that, what that means that to you? So. Um, yeah, sure. Um, so, I, well, sure. <laughs> um, so I guess where I should start is talking about the class that I've taken. Uh, my sophomore year, I started by taking the uh, AP European History course, and that you know essentially covers from the early 1500s to modern day Europe. So that was the first AP class that I've taken, and. It was definitely a, t a tough course, but that led the way for me my junior year then taking five AP courses, which um, I remember <coughs> were U.S. History, um, Biology, uh, Spanish, and some of, some of these were I sought on my own. They weren't offered by JTHS, <coughs> but um, others like the U.S. History and the AP English, and there was one other that I forget. Oh, AP Economics. And essentially those were, so I, I earned college credit on all of them. And it was just, it's, it's great to, to earn college credit now because even if the test costs, you know, 80-ish dollars or 20 dollars if you're on free or reduced lunch, it really saves a lot of money once you're in college because you don't have to take those courses over again. And you've already learned that knowledge so you can actually um, go into college maybe as a first or second semester freshman or a first semester of sophomore. And this semester I'm taking even more AP classes. So really, it's great that these AP courses are being offered at such a young age because once you break that barrier of, okay, now I'm in AP classes, you get the confidence to actually go in and take even more AP classes. And okay. Alex was instrumental on our uh, strategic plan team saying, we've got to get more students in this advanced placement group and we also have to give them support. So now we have support for students in the summer, support during the school year, and some of our upper class students are mentoring some of our freshman students as they are starting their AP experience so that we can increase the number of students that have these opportunities. Right, and like, um, even this year we're even starting um, practice AP exams. So now being in the AP exams is the first time you're actually seeing the test. You're actually seeing the test even before you're taking the exam which lessens the stress even, even further. And I think that's, that's, that's such a great thing that we're doing this year, that we're having kids um, go in and take a practice test so that when they go into the test, they have even more confidence and hopefully be even better on the test. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, so there are two different ways that well, you're able to earn college credit through GTHS. There's one, which is, as Alex touched on, was advanced placement. 
The other one is dual credit through JJC. With that, you're able to take classes, some of which are offered at uh, Joliet West or Joliet Central, and some of which are actually offered at JJC, in that you're able to take the classes and both get uh, credit for JGHS classes, as well as get credit hours for JGC. Those, which, those then can transfer over to, if you go to JGC or to any other colleges that you might go to. So for me, uh, sophomore year I took uh, A plus certification, which is kind of computer basics. And so that was a full credit cor course with JJC. So now I have those going in so that next year I won't have to take the introductory classes. So, <laughs> so I guess my own personal experiences with AP classes was that my sophomore year I took AP European History, which is really important to me because that was my own first experience with you know, AP classes and the AP exam. And also for me because I plan on being a history major over at whatever college I end up going to. So I took that exam, I got a five on it, which is the highest score, which is nice. And the ne next year I took US History and English 3, the English Language and Literature, English, English Language and Composition course, uh, which I both it also did pretty well. I got fives on both of them. So these, these AP credits are important because I just spent a college visit at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. I talked to a financial aid director there, and they said that with these uh, three AP courses that I took, I have a roughly a half semester off which is, you know, financially is great. And then they said if I do well on the uh, current AP courses that I'm taking, it's a uh, pretty, pretty good chance I could be a sophomore going in, which is just amazing in the fact that the money saved, you know, really important, even opportunities. So they said I can go, like, study abroad on a personal semester if I would like, you know, and then hopefully I do well on the AP exams. And I think it's a really great benefit that we have at plus and Central, I suppose. <laughs> so you're starting out paying for three years of college yeah. as opposed to four. Yeah. Deal. Um, when we talked about all of the students have a, a program of study, another thing that we do with our students that is relatively new and, and pretty exciting, especially for me coming from a counselor background, the students have a chance online where parents and students together can look at it and, and um, plan together. They have a chance to build what we call an individual career plan. So using that program of study, they can go into their home access account where parents can see grades and, and coursework and everything that's going on with the student, but they can also plan four years out. I know this is a little bit hard to see from where you are. They can plan a full four years out what courses they're going to take while they're in high school. So students can start out as a freshman saying, all right, well, when I'm a sophomore, I want to, I want to take that AP European history or I want to take a computer class every year, or a language class every year. And they can go ahead and map that out with their parents so that they have a clear picture of where they're going. This idea of knowing where you're going while you're in high school so that you start off on the right foot when you leave high school to get to where you really want to be is something we're really working with the students so they have a plan and they have a plan to make their dream of their career a reality. I mentioned earlier the job shadowing that's part of our sophomore curriculum for students. All of our sophomore students have this built into their sophomore year. So it's something all of them get to experience. And another great thing that we have is the technology, which I believe students, uh, Ms. O'Connell is going to cover for me. Well, I'm going to um, ask Matt to help me out with this first part because he was a part of the um, start of the one-to-one -one, um, technology. So um, before I kind of get into the benefits of all this, Matt, do you want to explain what happened in the very beginning when this was all just kind of a dream? Sure. Because you were a part of that. Yeah, so for me, this year was my senior year, and it was all the way back in my freshman year. All the way back. <laughs> I know, three years, but it a long time. <laughs> so, all the way back, um, I was in my geometry class, and the assistant principal called me out, asked if I wanted to be involved, not really knowing what I was getting into, and asked me if I wanted to be involved, and I said, sure. So, as I found out then, is... GTHS to better prepare students for college, better prepare students for the work environment, is provide computers and use those in the classroom so that they know how to use computers, how to use like Microsoft Office and other essential software 
before they got out of high school. So with that, uh, my sophomore year, the teachers got pretty much the same devices that are right there. Uh, in order to kind of get them used to the devices, get used to using them in class, and then the year after, uh, freshmen got devices, and it's been kind of a steady rollout since then. And next year will be a complete rollout where all the students will have the opportunity to have these devices. And unfortunately, you will never. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't <laughs> heard 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 but I'm definitely enjoying working with it and seeing where we'll be able to get with them. Yeah. So, um, what we have seen from a staff side is numerous benefits for our freshman and sophomore classes. Um, like Matt said, next year, all four grade levels will have um, their own device. They're not exactly what you see on the table. That's what the teachers use. Um, the students are very portable, they're very durable. Um, you can come in. You can come in. <laughs> come on in. Um, they um, are very durable. Um, my son has one, it's in his backpack, you know, in and out, in and out. Um, the nice thing about it also is that um, wherever there's wireless, they can log in and do their assignments. Um, we have um, basically, so all of our buildings now are wireless. They have to be so the kids can um, do their assignments and log in. It's not that teachers have gone away completely from books and paper, um, but for the most part, we are on an online basis with our freshmen and sophomores. Um, all the teachers are putting their assignments into a, a format called GT Learn. Um, each teacher has their own site. The kids will um, have their entire schedule available to them. They can click on their class and see um, the assignments for the day. And actually, here's an example of um, one of the teacher's pages. This is for one of the biology classes. And on the left-hand side, the, the kids can see ahead of time, kind of like in college when we would get our syllabus things to go, and you could see, okay, in May I have this huge project you know, coming up. I can get started on it now. That's what our students are starting to experience now. And I have a very good feeling that when they enter um, you know, higher education that they're going to be all the more prepared than other students. Um, I, have very, I have a lot of friends in education in other districts and other states and in our own state and they're just amazed at what our students have. They just, they're actually, they're in disbelief. They're like, what? All your kids have devices? I, I, that's unbelievable. Like, how can you guys do that? It's, you know, the money, the, the management and all this, but um, the entire district has come together and, you know, even when the kids have little problems, we have the, the, the technology help rooms for them. And uh, it's, been a, it's been a great thing. Um, this also just shows how the kids would um, submit their si assignments. It's all sort of like a blackboard kind of thing, like what we would have in Snow Wild Civic College, but we had a blackboard where we'd submit online assignments. But, and that's what the students are doing now. Um, from a counselor standpoint, this has been a huge benefit for our students that for various reasons have had to be away from school for extended periods of time, either you know due to illnesses or whatever. Um, they've always, the success of having assignments um, completed and turned back in have been, um, have increased greatly because they're able to log in wherever they're at, get their assignments and resubmit them to the teachers. And so the, the lag of education, you know, from them not being in the classroom is being made up by having these devices. So, um, and this is like a calendar, like I, my son had, he's a sophomore in the class, and I see, you know, I can go on, have him log into his account, and I can see what he's, I'm expecting for the month, what days he's having exams, or um, big assignments coming up. So, and this is what the kids would all see from their um, teacher's site. And then there's also a way where they can have online, like conversations with their teachers, um, kind of you know like a, like a online form. yeah online form. There you go. Um, so they can have answers to their questions pretty, you know, readily at their disposal, even though they're not sitting with their teacher at that moment. Or for that student that is a little bit more apprehensive and is afraid to raise their hand in the class. Um, they can message their teacher and, and receive assistance that way. Um, also, um, I don't think we have a slide on this, but I have to say the communication that I've had with um, my students, um, I have a, a little over 400 students on my caseload, 
at Joliet Central, and I have to say the communication that I've had with um, my um, students has increased probably a hundred times due to them having devices and the, the fact that I can get to students quicker because they can send me an email and um, they'll say, you know, Mrs. O'Connell, can you please call me in? I really need to talk to you right away, get the call slip, call them out of class, and they're there. Instead of them feeling uncomfortable going to the teacher, may I please have a pass, you know, and just all those kinds of things. So I have to say this is, it's been a wonderful, wonderful addition to our district. Um, we also, um, at both campuses, we have five deans um, to um, assist our students in you know, various reasons from attendance to behavior to other things. And each campus has eight guidance counselors. So um, I don't know, you, maybe you guys could explain what your guidance counselors and deans have done for you um, over your four years. Yeah, everything. Yeah, everything. <laughs> Love some copies so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, and we, you know, have, um, at our campus, we have a college and career center that is open. Um, we have a, Cody Daly has been the ISAC representative for both of our campuses, and he's done a, a lot of um, <coughs> events in the community with financial aid, FAFSA, um, all those sorts of things. He has a couple, March 11th, we have another one coming up for after FAFSA, like what do we do now, now that we filed our FAFSA. Um, but he goes to both campuses and he sits with our students twice, two days a week and, and really sits and gets with their parents and, and walks and walks you through that because it's such a confusing and intimidating process to fill that out for the first time <coughs> and it's something that you guys will have to do every single year when you go to college so to have um, Mr. Daly with um, our students is a great thing and um, we also uh, you guys are in this process now of getting your acceptance letters and, and the scholarships and we have we have interviews going on um, nightly now for um, scholarship awards, but that's something else that um, we're there to help the students with um, daily. So, have you guys had to do any of that? <coughs> yes. Yeah, Matt? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, no, Matt. Alex, Alex sorry. Alex can probably speak more about that. So, um, so, what I say, I can speak about the counselor and the Albert. All program. of it. Okay. Yeah. So, I guess we should start with what Alpacati uh, has done for me. Uh, I've had a body since my junior year, well, half of my sophomore year as well. So um, definitely when I came in, we just discussed um, me going into school, having more academic periods than, you know, dropping, um, what to say, my, um, my gym, because I had a varsity sport, dropping that for an academic class. And then ever since then, he's just been giving me advice on, you know, what to do. Um, I've come to him asking him, you know, um, is it possible that if I could do this or that, he just goes on the phone, he calls. Um, these colleges, universities, and things, just getting me information that I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful for. And um, in preparation for college and scholarships, um, I've gone to Bacati for um, recommendations, uh, filling out forms, uh, transcript requests, everything like that. Um, he, he's taken care of. So, um, and definitely the, the counselors, not just Bacati, but other counselors, they, um, they send out usually monthly, even sometimes bi monthly emails. Uh, with a uh, scholarship, um, with our scholarship bulletin, um, detailing all the scholarships that we have um, available to us. So um, they definitely keep us up to date on, on uh, scholarship opportunities. Now, have you been awarded any scholarships? Definitely. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I got a couple emails about you from some <laughs> teachers. <laughs> any that you'd like to note? Um, I guess I could start. Um, the <laughs> University of Chicago has given me a full tuition scholarship. Oh, yes. <laughs> UIC has given me a full ride. Um, I'm waiting on Yale to see what they'll give me. But uh, University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign has given me full tuition and like, I guess two thirds of the room and board, so I only have to pay five thousand to go there. And I guess I can continue. This. You could go on. <laughs> you know, congratulations. <laughs> Cody Daly, it's been a really big help. Can we talk about Vespa and Cody? And yeah, sure. Uh, all right. So, um, well, just uh, as a note with Cody Daly, so the first time that I was aware of this opportunity, I was just in the library going into to tutor somebody and he said, oh, have you talked to Cody Daly? He's our ISAC representative. And I was like, sorry, what? <laughs> so he was like, yeah, he's supposed to help you out with financial aid. And I'm like, oh, well, this is that giant thing that you know nobody really likes to talk about. So I scheduled an appointment and say, all right, you're going to have to fill out your FAFSA, your CSS profile, and do all these sorts of things. So I went in there, 
talked to him and kind of had a, almost a better idea than what I thought going in. I said, oh, you know, FAFSA, you know, this is the great thing that you have to do, you know, just to start off. And after talking to him, I felt a lot more confident about that. And so that was really helpful up to the point of one day I got an email saying that I had to fill out something called the IDOC. And I was like, so what's that? Luckily, I was working in concessions that day, and Cody Daly happened to be at the basketball game, so <laughs> I came to talk to him about it, and I said, he's like, hey, Mr. Daly, what's IDOC? He's like, you know what, I don't know off the top of my head. Within an hour, he had sent me an email saying, this is what IDOC is, you know, this is what you have to do. Here's a, an email kind of explaining about it, and I just turned that in, so you know, he's been a great, great help. I love the fact that we have him. These are something that even I was talking to a friend of mine who graduated last year, he's like, we had a College like, I wish I had that as a, you know, when I went to us. And, like, so very, very grateful for Cody Daly. He's not an employee of Julia Tom. The counselors have made such a great partnership with him that you would think he's an employee because, I mean, look, at the kids are talking about him like they know him like one of their teachers. And he, um, he's exactly right. If you were to like, send him a message on Facebook or email um, Mr. Daly or even on Twitter, he will get right back to you. Like he, he really is has been a, a wonderful asset for our students. Thank you. Um, and one last thing, I just want to touch on with the scholarships. Um, this is our very big, exciting time of year um, within our buildings because this is when we award our our building scholarships to our students, um, just from within our buildings um, for various reasons, whether it's from their academies or um, involvement that they've had within the building. And I might miss say this forty. 43? Around $40,000 we were was awarded to students from central campus last year in scholarship money. And, um, and that's all due to the generosity of our alum and um, community <coughs> members. So we thank you very much for all of those of you that um, help our students with that because for many of them it gives them the foot you know, into the door that they need um, financially to start um, their, their next journey um, into higher education. So um, we, our scholarships are due this Friday and our applications, and so we're really excited to see um, the, the funds given to the students. So, um, and I believe Mr. Randich is on. Our, our students have done so well with their testimonials. Why don't we let them tell you about the activities they're involved in. On the sports side, the athletic side, we have six, we're in the 16 team Southwest Suburban Conference. We're in the blue division, both Central and West, because that's the large school enrollment. Since both schools are over 3,000, we're in the blue division. So there's a 16 team conference, uh, and I placed a brochure for Joliet Central at your place as to some of the activities. I created that brochure for our freshmen because we found at Central, when we got to NHS induction, the students had the grade point average, but what they lacked was service and part of being involved in school service and clubs and organizations. So we're really trying to promote that brochure with our freshmen. But we'll let the guys talk about their clubs and activities. Um, so I guess I'll start with athletics. I have been on both the varsity soccer and varsity tennis teams, soccer since my freshman year, and tennis my sophomore year. Um, like um, we said, we compete in the SWSC. Um, my First year in tennis was uh, great. We had uh, Riley from Central be our coach, and we've had, um, unfortunately I haven't had him since then because I, I then transitioned onto the varsity team where we had Mr. Uh, Gilman, which is, he is a retired um, tennis pro, I believe. So uh, he's, he's always been, you know, such a great mentor for, for our tennis program. It's been great, you know, being involved. Um, I've had the opportunity to go to some football games, and the spirit there is amazing. Have, watching the band, watching our uh, football teams perform. So um, our, our sports teams are definitely competitive. Um, I wish our soccer and tennis teams would win more. Uh, we had um, the Carney brothers that... One of them just graduated, he went to D1, and they would essentially carry the team on to, you know, win sectionals, and they would individually go to state, but it was, you know, a great uh, being part of, uh, you know, a program where we have such talent that come, come, out, of, come out of it. No, I really can't speak on the athletic side. I'm not too athletic myself, but at West, I'm involved in 15 different activities through the school, all involved in the choir program, I'm involved in a lot of technology stuff, all there's some I can think right now. NHS. But uh, NHS is <laughs> involved with uh, just general National Honor Society as well as the uh, Honor Societies for French, Music, and Math. 
Uh, so we definitely have a wide variety of things. Uh, I'm involved in our Tiger Tech program, which is kind of computer repair. Uh, involved with our choir program in seven different stuff with the choir. Uh, involved in our musical, involved uh, I know at West, and I, I know we're trying to see if we can get it started at Central as well as our opera scenes program. Uh, we're one of, I think we're, I think I believe we're the only uh, public secular school in the United States that has this program. So we're definitely unique in that, and we're able to speak to a wide variety of students and get them uh, out and seeing what's what's available out there. Uh, also involved in our fall play and our musical. I think I that. <laughs> uh, yeah. So there are definitely a lot of things that we have. Uh, I've been involved in a bunch of activities as well, but, but my two main focus, I would guess, would be that I'm president of the Nutting Club over at Joliet West, which is our anti-drug and uh, violence organization. I spend a lot of time after school, you know, uh, teaching kids you know, why things you should do against drugs, you know, stuff like that. Then my other main focus, I guess, is varsity captain of the Scholastical team, which is, you know, my pride and joy. I love going to that. <laughs> and uh, actually, next Monday is our, my very final regionals match, which is very sad. But, you know, I, West offers a lot of opportunity. Um, I spend countless amount of hours, you know, building after school. I really, one of the jokes that I have with uh, Deb, the sponsor of the Nunning Club, is that I see her more than my own mother. So, <laughs> so you know, spending all that time, and it counts for community service hours. I have to get them all written down. I think it's within the you know, area of like 600, 700 community service hours that I have. So, uh, you know, it's very fun. Lots, lots and lots of time after school, lots of time spent, but with very good people, and I enjoy it very much. Very good, guys. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think, based on all the things that you've heard up to this point that was shared about our academy structure, and then we just heard about activities and athletics, um, the third part will be our facilities, and I get that minute. I, I've been blessed to have, this is my fifth decade of teaching at JT, and I tell families when I talk to eighth grade parents, there's been no better time to start high school in terms of the opportunities for activities, clubs, sports, academics, and the facilities we have are second to none. That there's been no better time to start high school, in my opinion, than right now. And, and we have a lot of opportunities for our young people in this community, and the board and the superintendent in the community should be proud of what we have for our students. And so we continue to work with parents, with parent involvement. We know that's the most important factor in a student graduating from high school. Parent support and encouragement is the number one reason in almost all the research on graduation rate. And we like this model because this model has the student, the most important person at the top, and the support underneath is a partnership between the home and the school so that this triangle goes all the way across with no broken legs or no broken parts. Because if we have a breakdown, it's between the student and the school perhaps, or the student and the family, or between the home and the school. So we really try to work hard to build partnerships with our families uh, so that students can stay in school, graduate from school in four years with 21st century learning skills and their college and career ready at the same time. And so we have open houses, we have plenty of events for our families this year, Central and West combined, at a parent university. And so we did them on back-to-back -back days so a Central parent could go to West or a West parent could come to Central. We have dual credit meetings this summer, same way, oh, sorry, this March, same way. One meeting at Central, one meeting at West, so if a family can't make it because of work, they can go to the other campus. We also have increased our communication with our families through principal's weekly emails, and then our teachers are using the Home Access Center to have a lot of communication with email with our families. We've eliminated report cards and progress report mailing, and so we rely primarily now on electronic communication between the home and the school. And the third thing I'm going to talk about is our student edition. I'm really excited about this one um, because um, hard to believe, but Central is now air conditioned. So I don't know if you know that. So our school is air conditioned now. So our board has worked hard uh, to make sure that the facilities are comparable at both schools. Um, we have at Central and West state-of-the-art field houses, uh, just excellent facilities. Uh, we have outdoor stadiums with lights and football turf. 
And so we've done a lot to provide facilities for our students and our coaches to excel in. Um, in addition, um, we are looking at Central to have a student center addition, which will help us make it a 21st century learning center for our students. We actually began this uh, probably about a year ago, maybe a little over a year ago, because we were facing three problems at Central. You can see what, in this picture, where our little theater was at. Uh -oh. Our little theater was right here, and we've got just this column, and now it's all gone. That one fell down, but it was a cool picture that Mr. Balls took. But we had really three problems. We had an infant child care center uh, for young ladies who have their babies at and they bring their babies to Central and we provide support so they can stay in school to get their diplomas. It was in the lower level with no windows of the Little Theater, so we wanted to update that facility. The Little Theater was becoming in disrepair. The roof was leaking and the windows were leaking and so we had to do something with the Little Theater. And then third, at Central, it's the same cafeteria that Judge Bolden probably ate lunch in in the, in the 1950s. And we only seat 350 students, and so we were serving lunch at 10.15 in the morning and, and having the last lunch period at 2.15. And so with only 350 students in there, we had eight lunch periods. So this new facility will allow us to have a bigger facility and have fewer lunch periods, so our students aren't eating lunch at 10.15 in the morning and can eat more at a reasonable lunch hour. Okay, so those were sort of the reasons we went on this journey, and it's a three-phase project. We're already in phase three, the new student center edition. We've just we've finished with the demolition of the little theater, and so the way I like to tell it is uh, two years from about now. So what I like to say is the freshmen and the sophomores will get to eat in the new cafeteria. The juniors and the seniors get the dust. They don't get to see any of, any of that. But, they, but they'll see a nice facility when it's finished. It will be a multi-purpose cafeteria with a community space. Um, we just recently had an article in the Herald News, and I really don't know what community usage we might have. We're going around doing these presentations, so perhaps you kind of have a vision of what we're constructing, and perhaps there's a community usage we're not even aware of yet, and we'd like to partner with our community. For example, one thing we do at Central on Saturdays is we have um, citizenship classes for our large Hispanic community. And so the Hispanic folks come in in the morning and they go upstairs to the fourth floor and we offer uh, bilingual classes for citizenship for our community. And so I think there are opportunities for us to partner with the community once you see and kind of, kind of see what we have to offer. And so this is the old site. Um, this is a picture of the site on which where the new addition will occur. Uh, it will attach to the main building so that we close off Herkimer Street. Herkimer Street will be closed just a little bit north of B door and go just about to where our security entrance is at right now. Okay, so it will attach to the main building. This is the first floor overall plan. And with the new cafeteria, another thing that's going to help us at Central is you don't really build cafeterias anymore with the cafeteria on the fourth floor because you've got to bring all the food up and bring it all down. We also have storage on four different floors. It's going to open up some space for us at Central for some other usage. And so if you take a look at this, the kitchen area is going to all be on one floor. So now we'll have deliveries right in this area. So the trucks will come around Collins Street back in and deliver food there, which would be a little bit safer than the receiving entrance that we have presently on Herkimer Street on the other side of the bridge. But you can see all the kitchen facility, it'll be dry storage, it'll be refrigeration, it'll be freezers. And so everything will be on the first floor. This will be the dining area for our students, able to seat about 520 students. And so they'll serve as a nice space for our students. What's really cool and exciting for me is our students will have three different options for seating. Uh, they can sit along the wall on this curve where we're going to have counter space and electrical outlets. And so they can take their laptop devices and work on their own and just look out the window and work on their own while they eat their, eat their lunch. We will have some bigger tables that will have seating for about 8 to 10 students and then some chairs at these tables that will seat for kind of like a Starbucks look instead of sort of the look we have now in the cafeteria which are all common benches. 
So it's really kind of exciting with the three different kinds of seating options for our students. In addition, this Galleria that will attach will also have a credit union, it'll have our bookstore, and it'll have our tech support room. So when our students, let's say, have problems with their device on the way to lunch, they can drop it off at tech support and come back and pick it up tomorrow. It's, it's really going to help our school move into the 21st century. Even though the building was built in 1901, this addition is really going to be a nice addition to our campus and improve opportunities for our students. Um, we're going to keep a lot of the greenery that you see around here with the trees. Um, the Galleria will provide as, a, as an area where students can come in. There will actually be seven different entrances to the cafeteria through this Galleria. There's one entrance into the cafeteria, but there'll be seven entrances with, with stairs on both the north and the south side. And then we struggle at Central with a lack of visitor parking. This will enable us to have a lot more visitor parking for our visitors who are coming to school for conferences, and then they'll come into the new entrance in this area here. This is an enlarged version of that same thing. We just enlarged it a little bit, and you can see um, we've got like a little corner cafe we're thinking about putting in there for cafeteria for the morning for students to get perhaps coffee. Uh, we'll have some chairs in the galleria. There's stairs. <laughs> you guys can transfer to Sunday one. <laughs> We'd love to have you. Um, um, but it's, it's really going to be, washrooms will be right here by the dining area. So this is an enlarged version of the seating we talked about. But this area here, this dining area, is the community space that will be a multi-purpose usage. Because I'll show you another setup where it will be set up as a little theater. Well, that's in the next slide. On the second floor of the Galleria, we will lose the little theater with 210 seats. But we will gain two multi-purpose rooms for presentation rooms, which will have a divider. And so there will be a divider between them so we can use them as classrooms or we can open them and do a presentation just like this. And what's really cool on each end at the top of the stairs are collaboration rooms. These are rooms where teachers can bring their students and they'll have high back chairs and tables and they have a variety of seating opportunities, much like a college environment and it'll be at the top of the stairs. So one of the potential uses is like, for example, Freshman Academy, we do um, career presentations. We can do career presentations right here instead of the little theater, and then the students go right down the stairs to the first floor galleria and then go into the cafeteria. And then when the freshman students are done with lunch, they just go right back up to the second floor. So that's one use of the multi-purpose room, but we think it could have other usage, usages as well. This is the look as you go around from Jefferson Street northbound to Collins Street. The new addition that I'm going to show you will go right in the middle of all those trees. And that's what it'll look like. It'll maintain the historic integrity of the main building. You will notice the, the features would be the collegiate Gothic windows to the main building. The watercrest lines at 10 feet, which mirror the main building. And so we have approval from the Illinois Historic Society that this addition is consistent with the architectural vocabulary of the main building. This would be the view looking at the pre present security entrance. And so this will be where we'll have visitor parking. Um, on this side of the building, this would be um, on the north side of the new addition. This will be our new visitor entrance here. Visitors will now go in there, get buzzed in, and then you'll go to your offices. And then this is a look at the Galleria, the attachment. 